For this synthesis, you will need 10 milliliters of bromine, 10 milliliters of chloroform, and 4.5 grams of red phosphorus. First, add the chloroform to a 50 milliliter round bottom flask. Then, add the bromine to it. Swirl it together a bit to mix them. Then, attach the flask to a reflux condenser. It is best to use a widely big or all-in condenser for this, as that red phosphorus will be added through the top of the condenser, and if a narrow condenser is used, it can get stuck to the sides, which would just be a waste of phosphorus. Phosphorus must be added very slowly, just a tiny little bit at a time, and you'll soon see why. As the phosphorus reacts with the bromine, the reaction is so exothermic that the phosphorus actually ignites in the excess oxygen in the flask. That lovely jet of fire you just saw was some phosphorus burning. Fortunately, the chloroform that we added will vaporize and form a non-flammable blanket of vapor. Because of this, the rest of the phosphorus additions will not be quite as exciting. Here's a different view of it, looking at it from the top of the condenser. You can see that every time a bit of phosphorus is added, a wisp of phosphorus pentoxide smoke will leave the condenser. The yellow-orange substance coating the sides of the condenser is mostly phosphorus pentabromide. This is formed when phosphorus tribromide reacts with excess bromine. Phosphorus pentabromide will decompose under heating to form phosphorus tribromide and bromine. This bromine can then be reacted with excess phosphorus so that all of the product will be phosphorus tribromide. The amount of phosphorus that I used accounts for this, but more will need to be added. I did not expect so much phosphorus pentabromide to be formed. And since it is collecting on the condenser, not all of it will decompose. The rest of the phosphorus is added, which is sewn here at 8 times speed. An additional half a gram of phosphorus was added to make sure that there was excess phosphorus present. After sitting overnight, the liquid in the flask had gone clear and there was unreacted red phosphorus sitting on the bottom. Next, the chloroform must be distilled off. As chloroform's boiling point is much lower than that of phosphorus tribromide, a simple distillation apparatus may be used. However, don't expect to be able to reuse your chloroform. It will be too contaminated with phosphorus tribromide and byproducts. Let the distillation continue until it is well over 100 degrees Celsius if it gets there. Even though this is much higher than chloroform's boiling point, it needs to be certain that all of the chloroform has been removed from the phosphorus tribromide. After distilling off the chloroform, take apart the distillation apparatus, give it a good cleaning, and then put it back together. Make sure it's nice and dry. The phosphorus tribromide needs to be distilled to remove the non-volatile impurities. As you can see, it has a very high boiling point, over 170 degrees Celsius, which my thermometer does not read. The boiling flask and still head must be wrapped in aluminum foil so that it reaches the needed temperature.
Here's the rest of the distillation footage sped up to eight times. Here's the final product, 30.4 grams of phosphorus tribromide, a very dense, clear colorless liquid that fumes in air. This represents an excellent 87% yield based on bromine.